Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to take a look at WEP versus WPA. It seems uh, like a familiar topic because it is. I did a quick video and write up on WEP versus WPA in an 802.11n environment. That prompted a whole bunch of feedback and questions. Uh, the majority of the questions were quite simple. What if I don't have N? What if I just have a BG or just ABG? How does that fare? I'm not going to give you the spoiler alert, but uh, just uh, pay attention to how I did it. That way you can try it out wherever you work. Here we go. So we got two laptops. We've got an access point. We've got a switch. So this laptop, Churchill, is going to be my server. He's on the wired side of the switch. We've got a wire to our access point. And then access point wirelessly, about 10 feet, to Porky, the other laptop. He's going to be the client. right? So he's going to run a test through the wireless, through the wire, up through the switch, to the laptop and back. The other thing is, uh, in this environment, um, this laptop has a... Intel Pro Wireless Card 3945 ABG, and it was uh, quite the popular card, still a bunch of them out there, so it's a pretty good test. And within that driver properties, if you go to Advanced, you'll see there's a wireless mode entry, and it asks you what mode you'd like to run in. Obviously, the default is Auto, Auto Magic, ABNG. This is not an N card. I didn't want an N card, I want an ABG card. So we can run a test and force it to A, B, or G. Interesting note. If it was set for auto magic, it did not choose A. A lot of people think it should choose A. It doesn't. In this case, this guy chose G. Now, how do I know that? Well, from within that screen, you can go to connection details. And from connection details, that will actually tell you things like what access points you're connected to, signal strength, your IP address. It also tells you what band you're using. So if I set this for A, it goes to A. G, it goes to G. And when I set it for auto, it went to G. So that's how I know. Now that we've uh, got a lay of the land, we have to check out the spectrum. So we're going to use an air magnet spectrum XT analyzer, the spectrum analyzer, and we want to see uh, where the RF energy is. The access point that I'm going to use, the Cisco access point, is not powered on. I want to see how it looks like before I turn it on. Channel 6 is what I'd like to use. My production network's on channel 11, so we can see that. This is kind of a real time. This is a density chart, so whenever we get an update, we get a dot. These bright areas are a lot of hits, high density, which means there's a lot of uh, values, so we know where the actual energy is. And this is more of a historical view, so if you take this top guy and look from top, looking at the top view of this guy, you will see this over time. So I can see 11, yes, that's where my stuff is, that makes sense. 6, nice and clean, and then every once in a while you get a little something going by but again one is clean two three four five six so I'm going to stick with a standard planning uh, a standard plan of six and eleven is going to be my production network and that's two four going on to five gigahertz forty eight is a channel I want to use and this is pretty obvious it's clean uh, interesting note uh, my production network was channel forty eight powered on the Cisco access point it does its auto magic scanning and picking the right channel routine guess what it picked 48 as well so instead of fooling around with the Cisco access point I thought I want to leave everything on default so I moved my production 5 gigahertz network off of 48 that's the spectrum now we move to Wi-Fi I used you can use something like Insider if you want it'll tell you what channel people are on uh, this pretty well should mirror what you saw in the spectrum analysis anyways, but still, Wi-Fi review is a pretty good thing to do. I'm also using the Air Magnet Wi-Fi analyzer. It shows me pretty well the same thing, 1-1. One, one. And because the laptop, this is from another laptop, it was only a 2-4 laptop, didn't have a 5 gigahertz card in it, it didn't show me the 5 gig stuff. Whereas with the Cisco Wi-Fi analyzer, it supports both, and of course I can see 11, 11, and 149. Um, that's it from there we do our test so what do we do we're gonna to go to that machine and type iperf dash C in that IP address but I want to explain the dash R the dash R is upload and then download the two separate operations they're not parallel they're not simultaneous R can also be remembered as reverse direction then we get a uh, bar or pipe find and then double quote m bits double quote and please pay attention to the case it's case sensitive and that will pipe the output of iperf all the stuff that shoots to the screen it'll pipe it to that find command and then it will only display the line that contains the m bits so what you get is this you get this kind of neat little view where it just shows me the results so i don't have to kind of look through all that other nonsense it comes up fairly cleanly on my screen so i did that with 24 wep WPA, 
5 gigahertz WEP WPA um, I'm sorry 24A 24B 24G you, you get the picture so now results there's the 5 gigahertz WEP 5 gigahertz WPA not that much different and then 24 gigahertz WEP and this is the B this is the B again practically identical 24 WEP G 24 WPA G uh, in this case the WEP actually did better slightly better than the G but again um, I'm sorry WEP did better than WPA so there's not that much difference really if uh, if you want to split hairs uh, not as dramatic as we saw with the 802.11n we aren't dub talking about doubling your speed so to speak so not so much the results because your mileage will vary with your drivers your equipment your RF environment but this is how you would test that hope that helps have a good day bye for now